So I had an idea a while ago about a cool little project I could work on and this project was to do with a YouTuber called Harry Mack. So for those of you that don't know, Harry Mack is a freestyle rapper. So generally his videos, he's asking random people and his community to throw him a few words, random words. So can you throw me like a few random words to freestyle about? Can you guys throw me like a few words or, or topics to freestyle about? So bro, you gotta hit me with like a few random words, anything. And he essentially does a freestyle on the spot, off the top of his head. I come off the top, never be stopping, you know that I'm rocking on, uh, never gonna stop, even in front of a red octagon, yeah, y'all know I'm increasing the great vibes, octagon, that's a shape, but one that has eight sides. Really cool stuff, I'd recommend checking it out. So anyways, I thought it'd be cool to try build something that essentially shows all the words that he's ever been given and what he's rapped about them. But I never really ended up following up the idea. I thought it'd be, I guess, just a bit too much work to, to figure out how to get all the data. And a couple of weeks ago, I saw a video by a YouTuber called Kyle Halden, and he did a video about building a Joe Rogan search engine. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I thought I could bring back my idea and do something similar for Harry Mac. The idea essentially being um, you can search for any phrase, any term, and it will go through all of Harry Mack's YouTube videos and hopefully take you to the video where he said that term. Now, of course, it won't be perfect because it'll be anyone that said anything on his YouTube videos, but I thought it'd be cool anyways, so I got to work. So I knew that YouTube have the closed caption feature, which means uh, on the YouTube video, you can sometimes click CC and you'll be able to see basically the, the captions or the transcript uh, on the video itself. So I thought if I could figure out where they got that from um, and if I can somehow download it, then I would have all the data I need. So um, I went over to the YouTube API and I checked, they've got this uh, captions download API, which I think would have worked fine, but the YouTube API has a concept of quotas, which basically limits the number of API requests you can do per day. So for this specific API request, it would take, I think a few days um, with up to maximum 50 requests per day. And I was a bit too impatient for that. So I started having a look for another way. So I started looking through some of the HTML source code on YouTube to see if I could find anything. I had a look through some of the requests and actually within the HTML, I found um, a reference to an open transcript button. So when you click that button, I realized you could just see the entire transcript there on the page. It does fetch it through a network request first, but then it just displays on the page. And the great thing about this is instead of just looking to a video where Harry Mack has said something, you could actually link to an exact timestamp within a video. So it could just take you right there. So the first thing I did was use the YouTube API to get a list of all of Harry Mack's videos. Then I built a small scraper that used Node.js and Puppeteer, and that just went through each one of those videos, clicked on the transcript button, waited for the transcripts to load, and saved them to disk just in a raw JSON file. So some of the videos didn't have transcripts, so we just skipped over those, but the rest of the videos basically have uh, one file per video with the name being the ID, and that way I didn't need to worry about spinning up a, a database or anything like that. It's all just stored in the local file system and in GitHub in the, in the repository. So now that I had all the raw data, I essentially just needed a way to search through it. So I had a look at some of the, I guess, most common tools that you'd use for searching, uh, mainly Elasticsearch and Algolia. And to be honest, either of them probably could have done the job quite well, but I've had my eye on Elasticsearch and learning a bit more about it for a while, so I decided to go with that. So Elasticsearch has a nice RESTful API that you can communicate with, so I used this just to test out if this was all gonna work. Um, and then it's also got some client SDKs. So I ended up using the JavaScript SDK as well in the final application. So I built a Node.js script that went through all the files um, of the, essentially of the transcripts and um, combined them all, formatted it in a way that Elasticsearch is gonna be able to, to index it. And then it tried to, to upload it. And that all went um, pretty smoothly. There was a small issue where I had, I think just a bit too much data for one HTTP request. I was hitting some uh, request limit sizes. I think I had roughly 800,000 documents, they're called, um, with yeah, just over 200 videos. So what I did is just paginate those requests. So I think it just split it in steps of 200,000 uh, and that went through fine. So the final thing I had to figure out was essentially the queries. So I knew I needed two queries, one for the standard search that would bring back essentially a list of videos that contained your search term and a second one for when a user clicks into a specific video, then you wanna see the actual transcript and you wanna see all the links to the part of the video where uh, Harry Max said that specific phrase. So I just did a bit of Googling and looked through the Elasticsearch documentation and pretty quickly I found something that would work for both cases. So now that I had all the data and queries in place, I just needed to build the front end to actually let people use it. So for this, I jumped straight for React. That's just the front end framework that I know. Um, and I also hosted this all on Firebase. So. Uh, the reason I picked Firebase is that I could also use the cloud functions and I wanted to use the cloud functions so that I don't call the Elastic Search APIs directly from my front end. So that way I can keep all my API keys and secrets hidden 
in the cloud functions themselves and not exposed to, to users on the front end. So for styling, I use Material UI. Um, for me, it's one of the easiest ways to, to get set up. Um, so it's pretty simple. I use their uh, CSS in JavaScript solution, which I think for, for small projects like this uh, is absolutely fine. And generally just made my life easier in terms of styling. So I added in the dark and light mode as well, which just picks up the, the user preferences um, and defaults to whichever one is set there. And anytime you toggle on or off the, the dark mode, it just stores it in local storage. Uh, waiting to be picked up the next time the application is run. So the last couple of things worth mentioning is the, the YouTube thumbnails. So YouTube's got an API where you can essentially give it a, a, an ID and it'll just give you back the, the thumbnail. And that's basically a URL. So you can just add that directly into your front end code. And there we go, you have the thumbnails. Um, and the final thing I worked on was the random word generator. So I had a quick look online to see if there were any random word generators out there, but nothing quite fit what I was looking for. So what I did instead was I wrote a script that would go through all the transcripts I had available and basically get every single word from there. Um, every unique word that is, I think, minimum of four or five characters and just dump them all onto a JSON file. And then I just took that JSON file, popped it into the front end and randomly select every time you click on the random word generator. So we're here at last. This is harrymacbars.com. This is the final product. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it's a simple search, like we said, and we can see we can toggle dark and light mode off. My one defaults to dark mode. And here on the right hand side of the search, you can see the random word generator. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see it's just going to take you to a completely random word. And you'll see just below that the list of videos and the number of times. So quantizing just the once. If we go for another word, uh, let's go octagon. And you can see that he said that around 17 times in about 10 videos. So what you can do now is you can essentially click on one of these videos and it will pop up the transcript on the right hand side and these are all links so this is a link to the just the standard youtube video but then i can see each time he said octagon in this case three times and i can click on one of those so let's just click on the second one here 1922 and you can see it's taking me to that point in the video so that's pretty much it and one thing that's a bit fun to do is just to continuously click the random word generator so this way you can essentially see the, the variety uh, in his rap the variety in terms of um, words and how often he says random things so i think that's everything i wanted to cover in this video so this was a really fun little project to, to play around with uh, i'm pretty happy with how it turned out and this kind of video is a slightly different style than what i usually do so and um, if you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments below so thank you very much for watching have a good day and i'll see you in the next one Thank you.